All right, so number four. So we're going to use graphing calculator for this as well today. Exam two, by the way, was a happy exam. You guys liked exam two a fair bit better than exam one. The average was like 10 points higher. So that's good. The key, I've got the key right up here for the blue. Anybody want that? And the white one's back here. Let me just put them up front. Anybody want it? Look at it during class. Here, I'll just pass them around. I'll just pass them around. The white is the yellow, the blue is the blue. All right, so, all right, so looking at this, so we're in 7.2 linear program. We're going to try our best to finish 7.2 and 7.3. We will see how we do. All right, so remember how we start this. We barely started this last time. 7.2, we, we want to take these functions right here and graph them. And we're going to use our graphing calculator to do that. And I'm also going to put a graph by hand up there. So, what, so first off, if we're going to graph, let's take the first one. 5x plus 7y less than or equal to 35. If we're going to put it into our graphing calculator, what do we have to do to the equation first? Remember what's on the left side when you hit y equals on your graphing calculator? Get y by itself. Get y by itself, exactly. It just has y by itself, doesn't it? It just has y. So you've got to get y alone. So first step, get y. So step one, get y alone in each of these equations. So what do I do to get y alone? Subtract 5x or just jump the 5x to the other side. It becomes a negative 5x either way. I'm going to put the 5x in the front. You can put it in the back. It doesn't really matter, as you know. All right. So now, what am I going to do next? Divide by the 7. Do I need to flip the symbol? When do you need to flip the symbol? When you divide by negative, right? If you divide by positive, you just keep the symbol the same way. Okay. And 35 over 7, just 5 there. All right, so put that. That's going to be y1. Now, we're just going to put in equals. There's actually a special thing you can do. I don't know. Maybe I'll show you both. Whatever. So that's, that's the first equation. Let's do the second. Let me get them both ready. Then we'll put them both into our calculator. So there's the first equation. Let's, uh, let's grab the second. I'll put it over here. So 11x plus y less than or equal to 35. Same deal. Get y alone. So I'm going to subtract 11x from both sides. And there we go. So we got y alone, y alone in both cases. Remember, remember we talked about last time, and you guys never forget anything we talk about, right? What is x and y greater than or equal to 0 mean? About the graph. You're using the first one. We're, all, we're in the first quadrant alone, right? Everybody knowing that? That's exactly right. So, all right, so I'm going to go to my graphing calculator. Now, before we do, let me be clear what we're going to do. I'm going to go, I'm going to go y1, oops, y1 here equals minus 5 sevenths x plus 5. And then I'm going to go y2 equals, I'm changing to equals notice, equals 35. So I'm going to put those on the graphing calculator in y1 and y2 and ask the calculator to graph it. Let me write some instructions before we go there. So that's going to go on the calculator and make the window. Let's make the window x min, x max, y min, y max, All right, mix. Um, let's go 0 to, I don't know, like 10 and 0 to 10, probably good enough. Why, why am I starting at 0? Notice what I'm skipping. Negatives, huh? There's going to be no negatives. The x-axis is going to go from 0 to 10 and the y from 0 to 10. Why? Because that's what they told me. x and y are greater than or equal to 0. There are no negatives. All right, so go to your graphing calculator. Set up your window that way. Put in your y1 and your y2 and hit the graph button. And let's see what we can see. I'll just kind of neat where both of them overlap the red. Yeah, so, so right in here. So I don't want to scribble on it anymore. But let me, let me just, how about I just erase the other shading? And right where the two shadings overlap, that is called the feasible region or feasible set. Okay, so far so good? Does that make sense so far? Now, 
last thing we have to do is we have to max, notice they said maximize that thing right there, which is called the, that's called the objective function. That's our objective. That's in a real life word problem, which hopefully we'll get to today. That is your objective. You're trying to make the biggest profit or the lowest cost, or it's usually one of those two. That's your objective. So how do you do it? What does that have to do with the feasible regions? Anybody remember what we did at the end of last time? Yeah, exactly. You got to take these four corner points. You see those four corners of the feasible shaded region? It's, the answer is going to be one of those four. And so you just simply have to find the coordinates. We're going to use our calculator. Find the coordinates of those four points and just plug them into the objective function in for x and in for y. And take, what do they want, biggest? Yeah, max. Sometimes they say minimum. Sometimes they say maximum. They're saying max on this one, so we'll just take the biggest. So here we go. Let's first find the corners. How do we find the coordinates of that? Let's start with that one right in the middle. How do we find the coordinates of that intersection point on your graphing calculator? Remember? We already have in there y1 equals, what was it? Um, negative 5, 7, x plus 5. And you have y2 equal, what was that one? Negative 11, x plus 35. All right, you already have in your calculator right now y1 and y2. Remember what we hit to find where they meet? Intersection. That's right. Go to second calc and, and choose intersection. Second calc, hit intersection. Anybody not have a TI? Everybody in here has TI-84 or TI, some kind of TI. No, no Casios, right? Cas oh, you have a Casio. Okay. Do you know how to do intersection on the Casio? I thought it was just Kevin. So you have a Casio as well. Okay. Um, that's right. Yeah, if you have a second after class, or you can go on YouTube by yourself. If you, I just go on YouTube. But I'm glad to do it with you after class. If you have a second, just go into YouTube and type in um, intersection for the uh, Casio graphing calculator. All right, so on the TI-84s or the TIs for everybody else, second, calc, intersection. And then you can just hit enter three times. You don't really need to mess around um, with anything else. Just hit enter, enter, enter. And you will get that point of intersection. I'll show you while I do it. All right, so here we are back with our graph. All right. And I'm going to go to second. Calc is above table, or trace, sorry. It's above trace, right? So I'm going to hit second calc, which is above trace. Second calc. It's for all the calculating stuff, right? Come on down to intersect. In a minute, we're going to do the zero and maybe the value as well. So for now, it's intersect. Hit enter. And it's, it's going to ask you, what's the first curve? In a minute, this will be helpful, because in a minute, we're going to have more than just two. So let's just, let me just mention what it's saying now, even though it doesn't matter to us right now. It's going to jump around from line to line. And basically, if there was like three lines there, you would tell it which two lines you want to intersect. You would say, oh, this one and this one. Right now, we've only got two. So that's why I'm saying just ignore their questions. Just hit enter, enter, enter. So the first question is, uh, is that the first curve? We go, yeah. Is this the second? I don't know where it is. Where is the thing? On the very top. Is it the very top? Probably. I don't see it. Um, is this the second curve? Anyway, I'm just going to hit enter. It doesn't matter for now. Enter, enter, and then guess, enter it. It's good enough. Boom. See, I found that intersection. See the dot right there? It found it. There's the intersection coordinates. So let me write that down. So what is that? 2.91. 2.91. Point nine one with six is repeating. It um, I, on a test, I'm not real picky about how many decimal places. I'm just going to go two point nine one seven. I'm just going to round the six 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 forever off to a seven, and then the other one, yeah, the y value is what two point. Oh, they're both they're both the same. Okay, two point nine one seven. All right, so we got that point. Is that good? Is that working out? 2.917, Now, questions to that point? Are we good? Is the 89 working it out? Do you remember how to do that? Oh, yeah, good? It. Good? All right. So, okay, now we've got to find these other two points. Now, those other two points are not intersections of two lines, are they? How do we find those other two points? 
Well, two di they're done differently. This one up here, let me change my color. This one will be easily found by, by doing the table and looking at x equals 0. Why am I saying that? What's the coordinates of this point? Isn't it over 0 up something I'm not sure yet? Mm -hmm. Isn't that where that point is right there? Right? So if I just hit the table button, it sh remember the TI-84 or the TIs, they show the table it was making when it graphed. So just find what's next to x equals 0 on your table. So go back to the graph. Here, I'll just hit graph again. See the clear picture? There's the graph again. So you just hit, I'm going to hit table. Now you guys know where table is? It's up above the graph button. Hit second and table, at least on the 84. Second and table. See what's next? See the, when x is 0, there's two y values, y1 and y2. How do you know which one? Well, it's not the 35, right? That's the one that's going off the screen. It's clearly the 5, isn't it? You with me? It is the 5. So I just look right there, and I know. It's 5. Okay, so let's go back to our graph. So there it is. So this is 0, 5. So I've got the coordinates of that point, and I need one more. Is that okay? Yes. Questions on that? Not good? Okay, one more. So I've got to find this point down here now. How am I going to find that one? What do you know about him? One of his coordinates is 0. Which one of his coordinates is 0? The y value. Yeah, he's up 0. He's over something up 0, isn't he? See, these, these two points are special because they're on the axis lines, aren't they? One of their coordinates is 0. The first one is over 0. The x is 0. The second one is up 0, huh? So how do we do that? Well, that's called a 0 on the calculator. It does that for you automatically. So let's go back to the calculator yet again. Go, go back to my graph. So there's my graph again. I'm wanting to find this point, and I can tell it's a little more than three. Huh? It's a little more than three. So I'm wanting to find it right there. That's the one I want. So a little more than three. How do I do it? I'm going to go to second, calculate again calculating again. The zero, see the zero option right there? That means height zero. That means y value zero, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Hit enter, and it's going to go, okay, I want a left bound and a right bound. So, so it's, it wants to know it's on the right graph first off. Right, there's two lines. You've got to make sure you're on the correct line. I just sent you an email, by the way, while I was doing my 10 minutes back in my office. I just sent you all an email. Whatever email you put into Math Excel, I just sent you all an email with a YouTube link to doing this. And it's, it's a crazy slow one. Like, really, it's like too slow. You're going to have to fast forward. They go, they go, make sure you're on the right. It was the most thorough one, though. So make sure you're on the right line. And they show the person, go, click. And then they wait. It's like a pause. Click. There's a pause. You know, it's, it's a little <laughs> slow. Anyway, so see, um, so I'm moving along. So see, I'm on that line. I'm just moving just to see which line I'm even on. See, that's not the line I want to be on. It's the wrong one. How I'm doing that is I'm moving the right left arrow. I'm moving right and left with my, yeah, you see my finger on the mouse thing, right? Right and left, right and left. I, that's not the line I want. I want the other line hitting down, right? Am, am I losing you? Go back, go back to the laptop. Remember the main picture here. Which line am I trying to find? Come on, there it is. The first line. I want to find out where that first, not this one. I don't care. This is way outside of my feasible region. I really don't care where that is. I want to find where that, that one coming from way above gets, huh? That's what I'm looking for. So go back then to that. So I want the first. So I'm on the wrong line. What do you do when the cal graphing calculator is on the wrong line? How do you get it to jump to the other line? Up or down, up or down. Yeah, so the right-left moves along the line. Everybody catch me on that? The right-left moves along the line. The up-down, so I'm going to come over here. This up-down arrows will jump to the other line. Boom. I'm, I just pushed up or down would work. I'm on the other line. Where am I? I do not know. Oh, look, look at my numbers. I do know. Look at my number there. What's that say? 4.8. So I'm, I'm past 4 even. What does that tell me? So what you got to do is you use the graphing calculators. You got to keep the reality of the graph in your mind, or you can get lost. What am I talking about? Let's go back to the graph again. You should have them both before you. I'm jumping back and forth. I'm at four right now. Look, look. One, two, three, 
four. I'm pattern. I'm down here. That's why I'm not seeing it right now. Does everybody see that? I'm on this line, but I'm way down here, past four. So you've got to back, 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 back up until you see that. Does that make sense? See how I know that? So coming back, so let's look again at this. See the left bound, 4.89. See, I'm past four. So you've got to go left, 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 till it gets lower than three, and then I should see it. Four, three, three, hello. You see that? Do you see how I knew which way to go to get that thing on the screen? Right now I'm below three, and sure enough, there it is. Now, what is it asking me for? Left bound. Remember how it's going to do this? Remember what the graphing calculator is? It want you, I want to find a certain spot. It says, you want to find that spot? Go left of it, go right of it, and then guess on it, and I'll find it. Because the calculator needs a zone to search in. So left of it, right of it, on it. So I'm left of it. Uh, of it, what's it? it? It is this dot way down here. You with me? So I'm left of it, enter. Now it says, okay, now go right of it. Well, how do I go right of it? You go down past it till it's off the screen. See, I'm off the screen now. I'm down below it. So that's below is right. You with me? That, that graph is going down and to the right. So below is right. Hit enter. Now it says, guess, you can just hit enter again. You don't even need to move. There it is. Did I say that too fast at the end? So for the guess, just hit enter. So go left of it, enter, right of it, enter, and then just hit enter a third time. Don't even move it for the guess. It's good enough. It'll find it. It found the zero. 3.18180. Zero. Questions on that. Remember how that works for left of it, right of it, and then just guess. Okay. So 3.18. I'll say 182.0. So we found the three corners. The other one's zero, zero. You know that's zero, zero. So we found the four corners of the feasible set, feasible region. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to plug all those in. Let me get this out of the way. We're going to plug all those in to what? To this objective function right here. Z equals 33x plus 15y. So I'm going to plug in one at a time. First, 0, 5. Doesn't matter what order you do them in. So I'm plugging in 0 for x, 5 for y. What do I get? 33 times 0, 15 times 5. What is that number? 75? Yeah, 75. That's my first answer. Let's do the next one. I'm going to plug in for this one here. I'm going to plug in the 2.917, comma 2.917, in for x and y in this objective function. So 33 times 2.917 plus 15 times 2.917. Somebody have a calculator? Can you give me that number? I mean, I got a calculator. I can do it. So it's 33 times 2.917. 15 times 2.917. I'm getting 140. You guys getting 140? 140. That's my second answer. Third and final answer. Let's do this point here. The 3.182,0. Again, plugging into the same. You see how I'm plugging in every time? to that objective function. Is that making sense? Everybody seeing where I'm plugging into? Right? So plug into 33, the x is 3.182 plus 15 times 0. And that's some number. Somebody got that? What's 33 times 3.182? 104.94. 104.94? 104 okay, thank you. All right, so we got three answers, 75. Oh, and 0, 0. You can plug in 0, 0, but it's just going to be 0, isn't it? When you plug in 0 for x and 0 for y, that's just 0. He's not going to be the winner, clearly. We're looking for max. Sometimes they have us do min. Sometimes they have us pick the lowest. This one, they want us to pick the highest. Which is the highest answer? The 140. 140 is bigger than 75 or 104. So 140 is our answer, which is at this dot here, isn't it? So what that means, if this is real life, which hopefully we'll get to real life before the hour's up, it would be like the best, the maximum profit is what that would be. The, the feasible region would be everything feasible, everything that the company can do with their production and costs and everything. 
and this would be the best thing they should do for maximum profit. That's what that means. It's the best thing the company should do. It's very, very practical stuff. So our answer, okay, so what are they, what's our answer to the question then? The answer is going to be the 140. The maximum value is 140. So on the test, I'm fine with decimals. This is the answer we got right here in decimals. We're going to need to turn that into a fraction answer. Yeah, how are we going to do that? So it, it came about, so for math Excel, you're going to have to turn that into a fraction answer. So that was where these two equations intersected, right? So you're going to, I'm going to have to do a little by hand work right there to turn that into, um, you know, how about this? How about, um, yeah, okay, let me show you by hand. So I'll do it by hand. Min minus 5, 7x plus 5, so I'm going to change the screen. Min minus 5, 7x plus 5 equals minus 11x plus 35. Minus 11x plus 35. Does everybody see what I'm doing there? They're asking in part two of the question. We, we already answered part one, maximum value is 140. Now they're asking, where did that happen? It happened right here, and they will not take the decimal answer that our graphing calculator gave us. They want a fraction answer. On the test, I'm fine. Just give me those decimals. It's all good. But for Math Excel, I'm going to have to give an answer in terms of fractions. That's what they said. So how do I solve that by hand? This is what we tried to avoid, huh? How do we solve that by hand? One at a time. I'm just kidding. What's by that seven? Yeah, good. We've got to multiply through by the 7, right? We've got to get rid of those denominators. Would be, I think, the best thing to do. Multiply through by 7. Get that out of there. Multiply through by 7. These cancel. Minus 5x plus 35 minus 77x plus... What's 7 times 35? 210 and 35, 245? 245. See how that gets rid of the fraction, which is much nicer. Got to finish solving this. We got to get X alone. We got X's on both sides. So remember what you do. You get rid of one of them. Right? You don't want X's on both sides. So you add 77X to both sides. Or you could have added 5X to both sides. It doesn't matter. Just do the opposite of one of the X's to get rid of one of them. Because you don't want two. Right? So where are we at now? 245. What's this? 72X. Plus 35, good to there. What do we do next to solve for x? Subtract 35. Yeah, subtract the 35. So we get 72x is 210. Last step, divide by 72. So x is, can we reduce that fraction? Divide top and bottom by, well, 2 for sure. That would be 105 over 36. That goes further. Divide by 3. 35 twelfths, is that what it is? Thank you. 35 twelfths. So there's the x value that we had a decimal on before. So that's the x. And x and y are the same, though, aren't they? Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, how do we find the y? But they were the same. Good observation. Thanks. I wasn't thinking about that. Yeah. Remember back at this intersection point, x and y were exactly the same. Yeah, nice. So that's, that's the x and that's the y value. Is that good? a lot of work, wasn't it? That was one problem. Good with that. Questions I can answer? You know, it makes me think. Does anybody know already? I'm going to search on YouTube after class. I'll send you an email if I find it. I wonder if there's a way to get the graphing calculator, because I don't want you to have to do all the calculator work and then the by hand work. I didn't realize it was going to make us do a fraction answer. Is there a way to get this in fraction answers on the, on the graphing calculator? Do you know? Sure. If you type in the decimal, there's a function that exists. Oh, yeah, that I know, like the math, math, yeah. uh, inner, inner changes things to fractions, but not necessarily off of a graphing answer. That's my issue. Well, yeah. then you, you, you could just take the, take the decimal that's on the graphing answer and just type it. No, it's different. No, because whenever you write down, type in a decimal, it really knows more digits than it's showing you. Yeah, the graphing calculator knows more digits than it's showing you. So if you just see it, a decimal and type it and try to make it do that thing, it won't do it. Because it's saying, oh, that's not the same as, as the longer one I know about. Yeah, so that one works. I'll, I'll try to research it. I'll see if there's a, a special way to do that. Otherwise, you're going to have to do this by hand. So that would be the final answer on that one. We good? Let's try it. Okay, there we go.
So number five, let's give that a try. So start by graphing these two on your graphing calculator. You know, get, get y alone, right? That's our first step, get y alone on those two. So that'll be by hand work. So take that first one and get y alone, and take that second one and get y alone. search if I can find something right now even while we're even while you're working on that problem Let me see if I can get a YouTube real quick that would tell me how to do that because that's going to be a little bit of a pain if we have to do that by hand every time So you guys getting that okay? So solve for y. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna grab that six x and just jump it to the other side, and then divide through by eight. We all good? In fact, you don't even need to clean that stuff up. If you want to type it in just like that, your calculator can graph it, no problem. If you want to simplify it, that's fine too. Minus three fourths x plus five, like that. Good for the first one. And then the second one. Grab the X, jump it over. Divide by four. So there's our two equations. Want to type those two. In for y1 and y2 on the graphing calculator. Type those in. And then hit the graph. And notice the shading on this one. They're both going to be greater, aren't they? Y, right? So the shading is going to be above these two lines. Y greater in both cases y greater. So shade above on that one. So I'm going to put those in my calculator as well. So y1 is minus 3, 4, 6, plus 5. Y2 is minus 2x plus 8. All right, so that's, there's the graph I got. Did you guys get that? Yes. Is that making sense? Did you guys get that okay? Something to that effect. So I'm going to go to a new screen.
can graph that. So it looks like it hits about four and hits up somewhere. So it's, this one's coming down like that. The other one is going, I don't know which one's which. Let's see. The one that's up higher is the red. And that's the red. Okay. Like that. Okay. So, go back to the laptop. Everybody got those equations? Okay, you got y alone in both those. Everybody track it with me? Y is alone in both equations, right? Y is alone in both equations. Okay, and now, and it's y greater, y greater. In both cases, y is greater. So the shading is above. So the shading is like out here, and the shading is out here. See what I did there? I, I did both shadings. Where do the two shadings overlap? Above, huh? Everybody see that? Everybody see what I'm talking about there? The two shadings overlap up here, don't they? Not in these little triangles in between. Because both equations said y greater. Y greater. So both are y greater. So let me get rid of this and get rid of this. So this, this up here is the feasible region. Everybody see how this is different than the last one? The last one, the equation said y less. Less, so we shaded below the lines. This one is greater, so we shade above. The feasible, which is the overlap of the two shadings, is up there. Okay, so we're looking for the corners. What are the corners of the shaded region? Here, here, and here. You with me? Those are the corners of the shaded region. One of those three will be our answer. How are we doing? I feel like I'm just talking and talking. I need a little feedback here. I need like nods yes or nods no or words. Is this making sense? Do you see how the other one, maybe if I flash back for a second by comparison, see how the other one, the shading was down below the lines and so the two shadings overlapped down below them and these were the four corners of the feasible region. And you can skip 0, 0. The answer is never going to be 0, 0. So it's really just these three. And now, this new problem, because and that was because these were y less. Right? From the beginning, these were y less, y less. Shade below. Right? But this one is y greater, y greater. Okay. So one of those three dots is going to be our answer. we got to find those three dots. How do we find those three dots? All right, I want to make sure I give you a good answer. So let's, let's pause there for a second. So I can't seem to find a good way. Maybe I'll research, see if I can find something later. All right, so how do we find, let's just go back to the, I'm back on the thing here. How do we find those three points of intersection? Use your calculator. Did you guys find them on your calculator? So this one, this one is the zero on the, on the second calc. And this one's the table when x is 0, right? So somebody got them? So this is x equals 0, 8. This one's 0, 8. y equals 8 right there. This one is something comma 0. What's this one? 6.67. 6 comma 0, good. And then what's the one in the middle? Two point four, three point two. <coughs> two point four, three point two. Good. Okay. So we got those three. So what do we do now to find the answer to the problem? Plug them in. So one at a time, you've got to plug them in to the objective function. That's your objective. In this case, we're looking for the minimum, aren't we? So we're looking for the minimum. So so minimum. Z equals 26X plus 27Y. So I'll do the first one, which is 0, 8. And it'll be, it'll be 26 times 0 plus 27 times 8 is, what's that, uh, 2, 160 and 56, 216? Did I get that one right? And then the next one is the 
2.4, plug that into the objective function, 26 times x plus 27 times y. So we got an answer for me on that one? Anybody, anybody? 8.8? 148.8. Do I have verification? Anybody else getting that same answer? Yep, good. And then the third one, this one, plug in 26 times x plus 27 times y. So we got that one. 173.4. Anybody else getting that same answer? Yep. Okay. So which one's the lowest? That one's the minimum. It's the low, 148 is lower than 216 and 173, right? That's the lowest one. That's the winner. So it's the intersection. It's not always going to be the one in the middle, but it has been on these two. So this is the point that's best. There we go. Hey, um, these are clean decimals, aren't they? So those you could easily, yeah, let me help out. You, could, you don't need to go back and do a whole bunch of by hand work for those. You could easily turn those into decimals. Do you know? Let me do it with you. How do you take 2.4? Because it was exactly 2.4, right? It was nothing else. 2.4 and 3.2. How do you turn that into a fraction? Do you know? It's 2 and 4 tenths, isn't it? Right? 0.4 means 4 tenths. Oh, and you can just use the fraction button on your calculator. Yeah, do you guys know? You can just type in 2.4. And goes, yeah, so if it's a decimal that ends, because earlier I was saying that if you tell Alexander that you can't, but you, I meant you can't for decimals that go forever. But for decimals that end, yeah, your, 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 your button will do it. Just, just take 2.4. I mean, you can do it by hand and, and get it. Or you could use your calculator. Hit math, enter, enter. Hit, type in 2.4, math, enter, enter. And it'll change it to 2 and 4 tenths, which is something I don't know. 24 tenths, 20 fifths. 12 fifths, and then the 3.2, same thing, hit math, enter, enter. 16 fifths? It'll change it to 16 fifths. So that, that'll be easy. So that won't be bad. We won't have to do a big old solving thing for that. Am I confusing you? I'm going back and forth. I know this can be a little confusing. Is that making sense? So we graph them on our calculator, find the intersection points, plug them into our objective function, and then in the end, they want the answer. Let's, let's type that in. They want 12, 12 fifths and 16 fifths. Let's go back. 8. Okay. Let's take a look at that one. So find the minimum and the maximum value. So put those three, solve for y in each of those. Get y alone for each of those equations and put all three on your graphing calculator, y1, y2, y3, and graph them. Let me, let me wander around and help if I can. Well, here, I'll, I'll do the beginning part with you. So solve for y, jump it over. So there's the first one. We'll call that one y1. The second one, y2. Everybody see what I'm doing? When I jump something to the other side of the equation, it changes signs, right? Everybody okay with that little maneuver? So there's y2, y1, and then for the last one. Go ahead and solve for, solve for y. Now, that one has a little trick. So I want to see if you remember that trick. I think you'll get more out of it if I give you a chance to do it first. And then I'll wander around and see if I can help you with the calculator with our last 10 minutes. So on the test, again, don't worry about the decimal fraction thing. I'm fine with decimals. Just, just do the graphing calculator and it's all good. So solve for y there. What's the trick I'm talking about? Yeah, remember when you divide by a negative or multiply by a negative, you need to flip the symbol. Remember the symbol needs to turn. So if I grab that 2x and I jump it to the other side, becomes minus 2x, right? And then I have to get y alone, right? So I have to get rid of that minus, which is really a minus 1 on that y. So divide through by minus 1, and the symbol flips. Be good, so that'll be y3. But we have to remember, that one's going to be shaded the other way, isn't it? 
It's kind of, um, I'm not sure what that's going to look like. It's kind of interesting. So type those three in, y1, y2, y3. Type those into your graphing calculator and um, see what you got. I'll type it in as well, then I'll cruise around and see if I can help. So I got, a, I got a graph on that. Okay, so let me, let me drew the whole thing. So what is it? So the first one of the lines is going up, up, up that way. It's going up, up, up like that. The other line is coming down, down, down like that. And then the third one, the green one, is going like that. And it's going to hit there and go like that. Yeah, so here we go. Looking back at it. Okay, so there's the graph again. Now remember, it's below the red and the black. So what, what area is below the red and the black and above the green? This region. Huh. See, that, that's below the red and the black lines, right? It's under the red and the black and above the green. Because the green, the third one, was the one that said greater. The other two said less. So there's the section. What are the corners for that? Here, here, and that's it. The rest is, is no corners, right? The next is just a big, just a ever-widening shading downward, 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 right? And what are they asking me to find on this problem? They're asking me to find the minimum value of this. Let me erase this here. This objective function. The minimum value for that objective Function right here. So, would it be there is no minimum value? Yeah. Because it continues. You see that? You see how the shading goes down and left forever? So you could go more and more negative values forever. All the shaded region is feasible, which means allowable. It's possible, right? And it goes down forever. So when you have shading go down forever, and they're asking for a minimum, now if they wanted maximum, one of these would be the, the maximum. But they're not asking maximum. They're asking minimum. So there is no minimum. There is no lowest on this one. Does that make sense? Do you see that? Let's answer that, make sure. Sure enough, there's no minimum. So there's no, whoops. Come on, eraser. There we go. So there's no, there's no minimum. But one of these two will be the maximum, won't it? One of those, they're asking minimum and maximum. So how do you find those? You've got to find the intersection between the lines. Now, when you do the intersection, um, oh, we're out of time, aren't we? So when you do the intersection for those two, you're going to have to be a little careful when you run the intersection. Let me just show real quick, because you've got to make sure you're on the right two lines. So let me show you what I mean. So go to second, calc, second, calc, go down to intersect. Okay, now you've got to make sure you're on the right two lines. See what line my cursor's on? See it up there flashing? I can move it right and left just to be clear where it's at. The YouTube video I sent you will help with this. See this right here? So I go, yeah, I want that. It says, is that the first curve? I'm saying hit enter. Yes, that's the first one. Okay, what's the second one? It's on this one now. So yeah, that's the second one. And it'll find the intersection of those two. Guess, and I said enter. For guess, you just always hit enter. There we go. I found the intersection of those two lines. It's at 3, 5. So let's remember that, 3, 5. And then I'll do it one more time real quick. Second cal, give me intersect again. Okay, is this the first curve? Uh, yeah, I'll say that's the first curve. Is this the second? No, I don't want that one. Hit the up arrow or down arrow. Is this the second? Yeah, that's the second. Hit enter for guess, and that's at 6, 2. 3, 5, and 6, 2. So 3, 5, and 6, 2. So 3, 5, 6, 2. Plug them into the objective function. Is that the one? Yep. And this is the winner. That's the one that's will be the highest, I guess. If you plug those into the objective function for X and Y and figure out which one's highest, so it's three five, I guess.
All right, guys. That's the only section we got done. That's good, though. I'll see if I can find anything else for the by hand. But there's only one problem with ugly numbers, so I don't think it's a big deal. And it won't be on the test, so it's not a problem. If that makes sense? I won't require fractions on the test. Decimals will be good enough, so don't worry about that.